hijab in Islam, and it is mandatory or voluntary? The hijab is an essential part of Islamic culture, but how it starts, let me take you back in time, 1400 years ago, in the city of Medina, Saudi Arabia. At a time when Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him was tasked, to finding a solution for a women's, in the city being attacked and molested. Like so many other social, political, and familial issues that Muhammad peace be upon him faced during his prophethood, he prayed to Allah his God, to show him and his Ummah a light, he turned this over to God, and a verse was revealed in the Quran, O Prophet, tell your wives, your daughters, and the women of the believers, to draw upon themselves their garments. Chapter 33, verse 59 dash. We are taught to dress modestly. This modest dressing is not just for the females. It is for the males as well, and is taught to be of high character. Allah did not just order women to wear hijab, Allah also order men in the other verse, which says, tell the believing men to lower their gaze and be modest. That is purer for them. Allah is aware of what they do. Chapter number 24, verse number 30. Hijab for men. What is the hijab for men? It is to lower your gaze, to dress with clothing that is not tight, it's your duty. Make sure you are dressed in loose clothing, my brothers. It's not just for the women. In fact, when Allah speaks of lowering the gaze and hijab, He speaks about the men first, in Surat honor. Tell the believing males first, to lower their gazes, and protect their private parts, and one whole verse later, He says and also tell the believing women, amazing. But the men always think hijab is for the women. Brother, hijab is for you as well. Now we know the history of hijab but, we don't know, that hijab is mandatory or voluntarily, in this matter, the Islamic scholars divided into two groups. The first group of scholars views on the hijab. Their opinion is that women should cover their whole body, and face, and feet. This is necessary, and also they say it's for us, and they have reasons for it. Following the Quran and the Sunnah, it is mentioned in the Quran, in chapter 33 and verse 53, Allah orders the mothers of the believers, who are the wives of the Prophet peace be upon him, to communicate with companions of the Prophet, from behind the hijab, and must cover their faces. And moving six verses later, from the same chapter, Allah says in verse number 59, O Prophet of Allah only command your wives, your daughters, and the women of the Muslims, to lower down their garments. This is more befitting, if they are not recognized, they will be not harassed. Now in this verse, the command is for three types of women, to lower their garments, the wives of the Prophet, the daughters of the Prophet, the women of the Muslims, which means they as well should cover their faces. And there is a lot of others evidence mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet, but I find a very interesting one in the history. The Prophet peace be upon him showed us the process of getting married. He commanded us to look at the woman we are interested in, before getting married, once upon a time a man came to the Prophet, and said, O Prophet of Allah, I send a marriage proposal to a girl from Ansar, Prophet peace be upon him said, Did you look at her before you propose her? He said no. The Prophet said, Go and look at her. This means that if the woman was walking in the streets of Medina, or going to the masjid, and she was unveiled, the Prophet would not have told him to look at her, this indicates that every woman used to wear the veil, and cover from head to toe. The second group of scholars views about hijab. Their opinion is, the hijab for women should be just for the body, not for the face, and hands, and feet, the say we looked at many different verses of the Quran, step by step to try and see what they actually say about what a Muslim woman should wear. We've looked at many different verses of the Quran, and the whole picture that we got, is that our understanding of a woman's clothing today, doesn't really come very clearly from the Quran and Hadith. It's not like we can say, okay, the Quran says this and that's why we're wearing this. And the Hadith says this and that's why we're wearing this. We looked at chapter number 24, verse number 31, and we saw. The verse does not specifically say that Muslim women should cover their faces, it just took it for granted. It's telling to women draw their jilbabs, which is a large outer sheet, a large outer cloak, to cover the rest of the body when they go out. That way they will be recognized and not molested. So these two verses do not give you, you know, the total outline and saying that you have to cover from head to toe, or anything like this. Or anything close to that. It's just basically the women to be modest. And we looked at to Hadith, which mentions the sister-in-law of the Prophet peace be upon him, Asma was instructed to cover all of her body except her face, and hands. But as Abu Da'ud himself noted, it's not an authentic one. That's why the second group of scholars say, if something is not proven from Quran, an authentic hadith, then you have a choice, you can choose between covering the whole body, 
face, hands, and feet, or you can just cover your body and leave your face, hands, and feet open. In the end, I want to add something for my Muslims brother and sisters. Look, brothers and sisters, now we are living in a very bad time, fitna is everywhere, you know according to a survey one woman is raped in every 90 minutes in a world, that we are living in, so why do we give a chance to someone, we don't know in the time of Prophet, what hijab was wearing that time, but now the world is evolving. And we have to protect our respect, our parents respect, and our brothers respect, I hope this video finds you a bit light in the dark, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment box, or you can email me, I would be happy to answer. Thank you.